Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Raps Assistant on Air, your Rapeseed podcast. Today I have the honor to welcome my guest, Albin Gunnarsson from Svensk Raps in Sweden, to speak with us about his experiences of clubwood in the last years. Ladies and gentlemen, may you have already recognized the differences to, in, uh, to our last uh, podcast. Yeah, we have to broadcast our podcast here today in a new approach because Corona is not allowing us any personal contact in the moment. But we don't want to complain about this uh, situation. Um, Corona is giving us also a chance for more digitalization in our agribusiness. So we follow now these new developments and invite you for an interesting discussion about Clubroot. Make Clubroot uh, is a smaller topic uh, on the European uh, rapeseed uh, uh, market and in the perspective of the European rapeseed pests. Uh, okay, we, we know all the solutions which are necessary to control clubwood, but if we look to the market, we see that the infected area is still growing. What are the reasons for that? Um, experts, they uh, estimate uh, at the moment the, the possible uh, infected acreage in Europe with clubwood on a level of 150,000 hectares, mainly in the countries like uh, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, UK, Poland, and also in the Baltics. Um, yeah, so uh, the trend is clear. Clubroot is um, continuing, uh, is growing, um, and uh, it's not surprising if we also keep in mind that uh, in future time, autumn and winter period will be more and more wet. Luckily, on the other side, uh, the new generation of clubroot hybrids like uh, Chrome, uh, Cruiser or Crocodile, they already reached a very high level of yield performance and give us so a very helpful tool for our farmers which are influenced by clubroot. But unfortunately, on the other side, we get also more and more complaints about yeah, about uh, the club route, about uh, problems with our hybrids, about uh, production losses in total, and, uh, and also about the rapeseed technology itself. So if we keep that in mind, all in all, yeah, um, so not everything looks clear right now for this uh, challenge, and that motivates us to uh, go ahead with our new podcast uh, in uh, the topic of Clubwood and to think about is Clubwood now a barrier for us or could it also be a chance? Ladies and gentlemen, luckily I'm not alone here today. Uh, Albin Gunnarsson from uh, Svenskrabs in Sweden accept our invitation to speak with us uh, today about the uh, Swedish rapeseed market, about Clubroot, the challenges and the uh, Swedish experiences during the last years. So, Albin, welcome to our podcast. How are you doing? Thank you very much, René. I'm fine. Uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, today and uh, I'm very happy to tell you about our Swedish experiences. I mean, thanks for supporting us uh, during our new podcast and uh, for your uh, um, sharing of the experiences which you collect in the last years and of course for your personal enthusiasm for this lovely crop. Um, before we will start and, and discuss about the different aspects of uh, uh, Clubwood, May I would like to ask you that you introduce yourself a little bit to the international audience of uh, Raps Assistant and uh, uh, it would be also great if you could explain a little bit uh, of uh, yeah, what means uh, Svensk Raps and what is your position here in this organization. I grew up here in the county of Östergötland in, in the middle Sweden. It's a rich farming area with a lot of rapeseeds since decades. After university I started to work as crop advisor, but soon I got into rapeseed since I did my degree project in uh, Verticillium. Uh, after a few years with uh, Lantmännen and Agrochemistry I went to SFO, uh, Swedish Seed and Oilseed Growers Association. 
there I'm responsible for crop development trial and research. SFO and Senskraps is the union of the Swedish oilseed uh, growers and we organize the main part of the 4000 growers of oilseed rape in Sweden and we are financed by uh, our members and, uh, and the levy from the seed they deliver and these fees and levies uh, we invest in, in uh, trial and research. If we don't deliver results to the farmers we wouldn't be here where we are today but we are an organization with over 100 years of experience producing oilseed rape in Sweden. Thanks uh, for this uh, little introduction. Um, so I think now our audience uh, know a little bit more about your uh, background. Um, I have checked a little bit uh, the data in the last uh, days uh, and uh, looked a little bit into uh, yeah how is it going on in, in, in Sweden. Um, the, the last harvest 2020 I've uh, been uh, uh, delivered around 340,000 tons of rapeseed uh, uh, commodity. If we uh, bring that together with your acreage of more or less 94,000 hectares we we speaking uh, for Sweden about uh, an average rapeseed yield of 3.5 tons. Um, that is a yield level. I mean, uh, if I have to be honest, uh, that's quite um, that's really good. So, and uh, I I know many other European countries would be really happy about such an average yield. Uh, but um, you, uh, um, if I follow the last um, uh, news in the internet, you speak about an average harvest for, for Sweden in 2020. Um, yeah, interesting. I have also checked a little bit more into the database that uh, you were able in the last 20 years to, to increase your rapeseed production uh, from a level of 80,000 tons up to already mentioned 340,000 tons, so four times more. Um, that's, um, that's a really uh, successful story uh, uh, here uh, in Sweden. Um, I know that you invest quite a lot in your uh, own uh, trials uh, and in your uh, internal research uh, and uh, I know already from our collaboration that you keep really an eye that you um, get the most promising material from the European breeders for your market. Um, I'm interested, what were the main challenges during these last uh, 20 years uh, to reach such a high yield level? I've been with SFO and Sunscraps for 15 years. And uh, when I look at the yield development on, on different crops since 1995, we can see that winter oil seed rape together with sugar beets gets the biggest average uh, yield improvement every year. Our Swedish oilseed rape increases uh, with uh, 2% per year as an average. And one of the best reasons to that is that uh, here are two organizations of farmers that have uh, the development of their crops in their own hands. Both oilseed rape growers and sugar beet growers finance their own development uh, of the crops. In Sweden there are no such similarities to cereals and there is a very weak investment of, in cereals from, from the government, nearly zero. Of course you could always say that uh, breeding is behind the, the yield improvement, but I'm completely convinced that if you don't develop a crop hand in hand with, with breeding, uh, you can't get out the full benefits from breeding. Uh, you have to have a, a crop development at the same time. In Sweden it's where you find uh, SFO and Sunscraps together and in between both breeders, agribusiness and farmers uh, with a mission to, to develop the oilseed crop to a more competitive and, and uh, delivering crop. Uh, when we saw club growth increase uh, for about 10 years ago we started a new variety trial with resistant varieties. Uh, we could do that on sites where we had uh, confirmed soil uh, inf uh, samples with uh, the heaviest infections we could find in Sweden. Therefore we are now prepared when, uh, when we see that more club root is uh, on its way. Thanks a lot for this uh, um, little update. Uh, uh, interesting also that uh, you mentioned this 2% uh, 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 yield increase per year. Uh, interesting figure. Um, um, I'm interested, um, when, 
when did you came uh, um, in touch personally first time with uh, with this uh, disease uh, club boot and and what were your first impressions uh, of this uh, disease in in your daily work well uh, i came in touch with club boot uh, quite early uh, we uh, we we have had problems on uh, organic soils uh, where it's a little bit uh, wet. Uh, we had more problems in spring oilseed rape. Um, but it all started under a, d a difficult time and that was under the war. And Sweden did not take part but we had to support ourselves with oil and fat. Uh, it continued and increased even after the war and in the 50s uh, a farmer grew oilseed rape uh, and for the first yield he bought a new tractor and the year after he bought a new Mercedes crop rotation was oilseed rape, cereals, oilseed rape or maybe only oilseed rape uh, maybe more oilseed rape uh, on the volunteers and in the 60s it all crashed here in Östergötland we developed verticillium but verticillium won't stop you to grow uh, club root did in the 1670s it started all over again, but then with crop rotation, and not so intense. Price has, has also decreased and, and maybe the tractors and Mercedes got more expensive. Oilseed rape wasn't so fun anymore. And in the 80s we were up again to about 180,000 hectares, but now with the crop rotation and oilseed rape not more than every fifth year. Uh, Actually, last summer I met a very old man and a member of uh, SFO. And he told me this. Uh, when I took over after my father in the 60s, I got so lousy yields. Only one or two tons. Dad grew oilseed rape every second year. I stopped growing and then started over. I got into healthy uh, crop rotations and now my farm is back on track. It took me over 30 years and uh, now we get normal yields again. Um, I'm uh, personally, I love such uh, old uh, stories. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks for that. Um, if we if we come uh, back uh, to uh, the, our business today, um, I mean, I'm interested um, if we if we look um, to your own uh, clubhood trials, which you uh, um, establish every year. Uh, we recognize during the last years that um, if we have, especially in the autumn time, uh, more wet conditions, it is automatically increasing than the club root pressure for the coming season. So um, I'm interested, what do you recommend? Uh, what are your personal uh, advices uh, to, to control that? Uh, and um, uh, especially if we don't know how the autumn is developing later. The first thing is that we have never recommended oilseed rape more than every fifth year. Uh, farmers have asked uh, why can't we do as in Germany with those short crop rotations. Uh, but we know what happens. Uh, but you're right, pressure increases. The best advice today is that uh, avoid planting into warm and wet soil. If we have had a heavy rain in August, followed by warm weather over 20 degrees, we have perfect in, in, in infectant conditions. 20 degrees and free water, I say just wait a week. Plant when temperature is down to maybe 15, it's a big difference. Remember that the upper soil temperature is the same as the air temperature. The second thing is to, to, to use uh, our Swedish developed PCR soil test. Our members get a discount at the laboratory and for about 150 euros you can get an answer if if and how high your infection rate is in the soil. And if you have an infected soil, choose a resistance variety. But remember the result is not better than you than your sample. You have to collect a representative sample and uh, to get the right advice. Uh, with the sowing date, uh, definitely uh, we have a uh, possibility um, um, to regulate uh, this uh, uh, um, club root pressure already from the beginning. Also, our internal um, investigations uh, uh, confirm uh, uh, totally your advices. Uh, so, 
with this uh, um, more earlier sowing dates, um, yeah, we have automatically an, an higher activity of this uh, soil-borne fungus uh, Plasmodiophora. Um, we also checked in ourselves and, and uh, looked for where are the linked uh, links here and, and yeah, um, uh, we, we found that uh, probably on a level of 15 degrees uh, there is a border uh, between uh, yeah, if you can have higher infection or lower infection. So it's definitely the right way to, to have a look here to the soils and, and to check here the current conditions in the autumn time. Um, what are your sowing uh, advices uh, for rapeseed farmers which are uh, um, affected by, by clubwood? Can you go there here a little bit more in detail? If you know that your dad or granddad has an oil seed rape Mercedes in the garage, then start with the soil sample. It's a cheap insurance and avoid planting in, in wet and warm conditions. Uh, dry and warm like autumn 2020 isn't a problem. But wet and warm, like for example 2017, it's uh, quite risky. Ladies and gentlemen, um, based on your feedback uh, from the first uh, podcast, um, we looked uh, how we can uh, keep our podcast uh, interesting uh, for you. And, and so we looked how we can maybe add uh, new tools uh, into our podcast. That's why we uh, create a new session uh, called uh, Rapeseed for experts and a little rapeseed quiz for our guests in Rapsesist and on air. Um, today will be a first time. We will start with five small questions to our guest Albin Gunnarsson about the uh, Swedish and European market. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, this uh, small session. So, Albin, are you ready for a small quiz? Yeah, I'm ready. Then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah, let's start. Alvin, I have prepared a few things, um, and uh, so please allow me to check here a little bit. Um, first question. How big is the share of the Swedish rapeseed production on the European production? Do you think more or less than 3%? I think it's uh, less. Uh, it might be about 1.52%. Uh, next question. Um, your clubwood trials, we already mentioned them a little bit. Um, 2019 and 20, um, the results present again very well uh, the, the yield level and the difference between uh, resistant varieties and conventional varieties without this resistance. Um, how big was the difference in, in yield uh, between the, um, the best clubwood variety and your official checks? Do you know that? How, was, how big was the yield difference in relative uh, percentage? It, 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 it's about uh, 10%. Uh, if you look at an average over uh, the yield year 2019 and 2020. Okay, let's see. We will uh, check that later. Um, you mentioned uh, already uh, um, that you have a yield progress of 2% per year. Um, yeah, during the last um, 10 years, you were able to establish the Swedish yield level ar around 3.3 to 3.4 tons uh, per, per, per hectare. Uh, interesting, that is just 200 kilograms below the German level. But uh, now my question, what do you think? Which country is leading in yield based on the figures from the last 10 years? Which country in Europe is leading here just with the average yield per hectare? I actually think it's uh, Germany. Uh, and we have to be aware here. Uh, I know that Denmark is reporting uh, very high results, but the Danes are reporting their own Danish standard quality, so it's not a real seed yield. They transform oil content into seed with, I think, 40% oil, so their yield is, is uh, increased, and that's not true. 
that's into the, Dan the European statistics. Interesting data, Alvin, thanks a lot for that. Uh, um, next question. What do you think, um, Alvin, how many varieties were somehow promoted during the last season in Sweden? More or less than 20? Promoted? Uh, I think it's a little bit less than, than 20. It's uh, all together with uh, club road resistant, uh, OPs, hybrids, and uh, maybe some variety for organic production. This might be about uh, 15. And uh, last question. Um, uh, Atora is now since uh, three years uh, market leading variety in Sweden. Uh, based on an uh, attractive uh, um, variety package uh, and with several benefits for for the farmers. Um, may we left now a little bit Swedish market, but what do you think? How many hectares are right now in the European fields of Atora? More or less than 120,000 hectares? It's more. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for this little uh, quiz uh, and and for the participating. I hope you enjoyed that a little bit. Yeah. And, um, um, <laughs> the results will be analyzed afterwards and then uh, published. So, um, Alvin, um, we have heard now uh, a lot about the uh, Swedish rapeseed market and. Um, Definitely a, 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 a main or a big reason for this uh, success of sustainable growth of, of, of your production uh, during the last 20 years was your uh, internal intensive uh, focus of developing this uh, uh, technology in Sweden. Um, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning um, that uh, um, a more tighter crop rotation can create uh, new challenges. Um, I remember during our last uh, um, discussion in summertime when you were visiting Germany that you um, you mentioned that you established an an, an club root trial um, connected to uh, to crop rotation to check here. How is the influence of, of clubroot on the yield uh, of, of uh, rapeseed? I'm curious. Um, please share um, some of your uh, experiences, what you collect during this uh, uh, um, uh, trial. What did you find out? Well, it all started in 2007. Uh, we started a trial to test and stress uh, crop rotation. Uh, we started on healthy soils from 2007 we have grown all seed rape every second year, every third year, and every sixth year. In 2008, we started uh, trial number two um, with the same design. In 2014, uh, we saw a small decline in, in yield from every second and every third uh, year of, of oil seed rape, but no club root. And I decided to go, go for another crop rotation with the same principle, but just in, in trial number two. And uh, that one who started in 2008. In 2018, it was such a drought. We saw some club rot on, on every second rotation, but drought was uh, a much bigger problem. In 2020, everything just crashed. 100% club root infected plants in both every second and every third year. Autumn 2019 was warm and quite wet, so there were conditions for, for infections. But the interesting thing here is that, that it took us only 12 years to crash a crop rotation. And we got less than 500 kilos per hectare. Did you expect such experiences? Not really. We. <laughs> Of, of course we knew that sometime it would come. Uh, we might thought that we could see it come, uh, maybe just a, a few plants, but it crashed really quick and, and I think it's uh, because these perfect weather conditions in, in autumn 2019. Uh, and. Yeah, good conditions for infections at planting time, 
just get it to explode. Maybe we could have uh, had a few more years if autumn 2019 wouldn't have been so so perfect for club root infectants. I mean, I know that uh, it was also a little bit your wish uh, to, to share these uh, experiences with the farmers in Europe to, to prevent here such uh, um, um, experiences on the practical uh, fields uh, in, 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 their, in their farms. Uh, um, which, um, um, exp uh, yeah, which advices you would like to highlight uh, based on the results from your trial with our audience? In Sweden we have never supported oilseed rape more than every fifth year. Uh, now I think we will talk more about oilseed rape every sixth year. I believe that's a key point to the Swedish growers to stay on top in the European yield rank. Uh, the infections stay up to 17 years in field, but infections rate uh, is uh, uh, half in a time of, of 3.5 years. So best suppression is uh, a long crop rotation with control of, of susceptible weeds and a pH about uh, 7 in the soil. Uh, but then I would like to know, um, yeah, what um, what are your your alternative crops, um, yeah, to replace rapeseed then in the crop rotation? Okay, uh, we know that uh, the farmer has to to manage uh, um, the the soil in a sustainable way uh, to keep here the soil vitality. Uh, but also on the other side, the farmer has also to manage his bank account. So uh, do you have some advices here uh, for this uh, uh, question? Yeah, I know it's a difference here between Sweden and, and Central Europe. Uh, but uh, after oilseed rape, we recommend uh, two years of wheat. Then a spring crop like malting barley or oats, maybe spring beans or peas, followed by a winter wheat before establishment of a new oilseed rape crop. This works in Sweden, and maybe because we probably have some winter left, uh, we harvest cereals, uh, cereals late, and we don't have a chance to plant winter crops uh, in time. Uh, but I've heard farmers from UK to fear growing spring cereals to suppress black cross. Uh, the yield loss is is uh, very expensive, and. Now I know we get into land prices as, as well, but I believe Swedish land price is is uh, uh, const uh, is const uh, constructed to fit our crop rotation with with spring crops. It's also easier when the economic difference between a winter crop and the spring barley isn't so big in Sweden than it it might be in in uh, in Europe. Um, I'm, I'm humble to, to this fact, but it works in Sweden. We touched already a little bit um, that uh, this new uh, generation of, of clubroot hybrids uh, is uh, already now on, yeah, um, on a very high level and, and convincing with a very uh, um, yeah, competitive uh, um, performance in comparison to the conventional hybrids. Um, yeah, varieties uh, like Chrome, uh, Cruise or Crocodile, they are now dominating here in this uh, uh, segment of, of Clubroot. Um, yeah, if I would be a farmer and, 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 and there is some uh, risk maybe of, of Clubroot in my fields, um, okay, then I would use such uh, new uh, uh, performing, high performing varieties and everything is fine. But I know that um, yeah, you and me, um, we, uh, we, we know the situation and the risk of uh, that uh, if the things are going in, in such a way, then uh, um, it's uh, very dangerous for our resistance of, of club root. So uh, um, such a continuous usage of, of, so, uh, of these club root hybrids, that is not really uh, the, the, the way for the long term perspective. Um, uh, I'm uh, uh, interested. What what is your personal uh, position in such discussion with with farmers, maybe in Sweden? When the gene pool is so weak, and we both know that what happens in in Canada when uh, where they use the resistant uh, prevalently, like resistance for powdery mildew in Bali, uh, my advice is that uh, try to use a soil test 
uh, invest in a conventional hybrid if you can't find any infection in your soil sample. But if you have an infection, still keep uh, keep uh, a long crop rotation and invest in a resistant variety. But also be very aware of, of controlling volunteers after harvest. Don't let volunteers develop true leaves. Let them emerge but kill them before two leaf stage uh, with a, for example a shallow cultivation. When it when it's about volunteers it, it's quite important that after harvest just let the stubble be. Seeds will be cooked on the top of the black soil and lose germination capacity. When they germinate start to cultivate very shallow and if you go deep uh, from start uh, you will bury the seeds you will bury these fatty seeds and uh, and uh, and they will stay fine for a long time in the soil and then oilseed rape will pop up uh, here and everywhere in your crop rotation so you have to think soil uh, soil hygiene what is your opinion um, um, then in this way um with the uh, influence maybe of, of catch crops of, of on, on clubwood. Do you have any experience about that? Catch crops is, is a problem. Uh, we know we find clubwood on, on uh, white mustard. Uh, we have to be uh, aware of problems with uh, uh, oil radish. If you want to, to be a uh, a sustainable oilseed rape grower I'm not too happy to use uh, catch crops with with ingredients like uh, mustard or, or uh, oil radish or there is also a lot of, of uh, susceptible weeds you, you have to, 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 to look sharp of your of the components in your cat, uh, catch crop because it's it's difficult what I can tell you uh, from uh, our perspective is that uh, um, yeah, from these uh, shareholders of, of Rapool, um, so DSV, NPZ, uh, I can uh, tell you um, we do also our job here to improve uh, further the, um, the alternatives for, for our farmers. So uh, in the near future we can expect then the first uh, clubroot resistant varieties together with this new trade turnip yellow virus uh, that will give also a new push uh, uh, in, uh, regarding yield and, and um, more um, uh, alternatives maybe to adapt also a little bit uh, the, um, the technology and uh, also uh, uh, we will come with a new um, advanced uh, 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 version of this uh, Mendel resistance so uh, we will be able to, to give more uh, and a broader uh, protection uh, against clubwood to our uh, customers. I mean, we, we, we are coming uh, um, more and more to the end of our discussion. Um, uh, of course, it was really inspiring uh, discussion, uh, um, no doubt about that, um, about the different uh, aspects uh, uh, of clubwood and, and the challenges uh, um, of, of clubwood all over the, uh, in Europe. Um, may just one last question from my side to you. Um, we, uh, um, we decided at the beginning to call this podcast Clubwood Barrier or Chance. Um, what do you think? What is your personal opinion about this title? Well, I'm convinced that you get the highest oilseed rape yields with long crop rotations. And uh, there are more problems than, than club rot. Uh, and they all have impact on yields. And it's, it's, uh, it's like a puzzle. And you have to think about herbicide resistance. You have to think about black grass take all or whatever but a healthy soil is always uh, key to get a uh, high yield we should take care of our cash crop and and don't get the same mistakes as our grandfathers did after the war thank you very much for your participation on our podcast and and for sharing your uh, experiences with our audience it was really a pleasure from my side to uh, prepare this uh, podcast together with you and now today to speak with you about uh, yeah Swedish uh, market. We learned a lot about that, uh, your personal 
uh, advices for for Clubroot and uh, also a little bit uh, yeah it was very nice that you share your internal activities what you are doing to increase here the yield level to keep it high for for the Swedish rapeseed farmers yeah um, ladies and gentlemen uh, that's it here for today um, we hope that you could uh, benefit a little bit from our discussion uh, and uh, hopefully we were able to deliver some new informations uh, for uh, small adjustments on, on your farms. Um, Albin, some last words from your side? Well, I'm very happy to work with oil seed rape. I think uh, we have a lot of opportunities in the, in the future. And uh, uh, let's uh, hope for a good year 2021 so uh, to everybody uh, happy new year ladies and gentlemen we wish you all uh, um, a very nice christmas uh, and a nice time uh, with your family let us try together uh, to forget a few days about corona and uh, and yeah to look forward for a new promising year 2021 Stay with us also in the next year. New projects are already running. Um, it will remain exciting. And so, yeah, we're looking forward to see you also then in 2021. Your RAPS assistant.